Hey Libra, welcome to your reading. I'm Empress Rose. We're gonna take, we're gonna be doing an I Ching reading, but first we're gonna take a card from this deck overall for the whole reading. From the bottom of the deck, Eight of Cups. Hmm. Contemplation of it's, is it time to move on? Are you happy here? Do you wanna go someplace else? Is the grass, is there some place where the grass is greener? Is it really greener or does it just appear greener? There's an idea of uh, crossing something that you're not, you see something a little better. There's a possibility. It looks like there could be some possibilities that maybe right here is fine. Maybe right here is not the worst nightmare you've ever had. But could it be better? We won't know unless we find out. So over here, so that's overall for the reading. And then we're going to throw um, some I Ching uh, coins here. So we've got burnt coin we've got three coins we're going to throw them six times and that's going to create our I Ching hexagram over here we're also going to pull some uh tarot or oracle cards we already pulled our tarot card and then over on Vimeo I'm going to do an extended and this is going to be overall for the reading over there the eight of cups uh and then we'll do a more traditional tarot spread over there so let's get tossing we build the hexagram from the bottom up. I don't know how much technical information you guys actually want on this, but I'm just going to do it the way I know how. Two tails, yin energy, unchanging. Yay, three heads, yin energy that changes to yang. So we have a dynamic line. They're always much more fun to read. Two heads, yang energy. Two tails, yin energy. Three heads, yin changing to yang energy. So another dynamic line. So what we do is we actually build two trigrams and together they make a hexagram. Ah. <gasps> Three heads, I like this. So we have earth starting out on the top. And I'll go do some calculations and come back with the rest of it. All right, dear Libra, I feel like I have just returned to you, for you, a blink of an eye. For me, there's been a massive journey that has occurred here. Um, and it's I it's been kind of fun. It's been a, it's been a little bit of a, a yeah a little bit of a trip here. So what we have is um, we ended up with earth over mountain. Um, so this is very solid energy, immovable in a way, right? Mountains, earth. We have the the essence of something has been heavy, immovable. Um, I mean, what, there's nothing more, I mean, if there was a metal, this is what this would be, like some sort of like iron ore. This is like intense, immovable energy. That's where we're starting. That's where we've been. That's the path. That's part of our history is, um, is this, this immovability. The essence and the definition, both just solid, almost a fortress, almost a wall in front of you. Earth and mountain both change to these tri these are little trigrams and then together they make the hexagram, right? So we have earth over mountain. They both change to wind over wind, which seems very auspicious as we say in I Ching readings. Massive movement. I see a tornado. I see massive movement. This we are going from the most solid to to movement, not just theoretical. It's not heaven, it's not theoretical. It's movement, things moving, everything moving, everything going from this very solid, reliable, dependable, right? That mountain is there. Every morning you wake up, that mountain is there. That mountain is there. And then there is, and you rely on it. It tells you that that's the east. It tells you, um, it gives you direction. It gives you everything you need. It, as far as like you are on earth, this is earth. It's almost like a sense of, um, you know, your feet being in poured concrete, but now you can move. Now you can fly away. Now you can, there's a lot of movement, wind over wind. We can't have more movement than that. And it, it could just be ideas moving. It could be communication, a lot of communication, but something that's been very solid and immobile 
turns to movement. And I like this because this is also, this Eight of Cups is a pretty solid energy, right? Like people like it. This is a place, it's, it's pretty nice. A lot of people find what they need here. It's pretty good, it's very solid. It could be routines. It could be just something very well known to you that gives you a lot of direction. But then we have this sense of, well, should we move? Should we move on? Should we move forward? But here's what here's what the the lines are. So the our first two lines we can talk about sort of earth earth uh, situation of of all the little details down here on the planet. Um, it's changing. It's becoming more balanced. It's been very passive. Very not a lot's been going on in the routine here. It's been fairly passive. But we're bringing in some initiative. We're bringing in some. Um, shall we say, penetrative energy into this. So then the human part is not changing. You're, you don't, you're not creating this change. You maybe have created some of the groundwork for the change, but there's a sense where you're, you're right where you need to be. There's not a lot of change. There are a lot of dynamic lines, just statistically in this reading, there's a lot of dynamic lines. There's a lot of change in the reading itself change in dynamic and then it's changing from solid to very dynamic but there's a sense of you being in the eye of the storm or you being a stable presence in this and then we have sort of this vision and plan this is where all of the movement happens we go from totally passive not a lot going on uh, static situation to massive movement initiative this is sort of going on in the ethers this is sort of divine movement through your life this is outside of you this is a divine movement through your life it's the wind moving and the wind is spirit um, spirit uh, and sparar and air these are all from the same root words i think they're greek yeah they are greek um from the same root words of, of air movement spirit uh there's divine movement here uh that's the thing that's the most movable a lot of the details are going to change on the uh boots on the ground on the ground floor some details will be changing uh but mostly it's it's divine movement through your life so um yeah, movement on movement. I saw a funnel cloud. Oh, we are not in Kansas anymore, Dorothy. That was a phrase that came in here of just sort of being picked up and moved. Um, yeah, like Dorothy's still Dorothy. I mean, the whole journey is transformative because that's that's it's the journey. But for her, but um, but she doesn't actually do the moving. The divine does the moving for her. Um, so, and then what I, so then the, the, our first hexagram earth over mountain creates hexagram number 15, uh, modesty. We don't need to, well, actually that does come into play. So we have these three dynamic lines. So we're going to read those lines, uh, known for modesty, good omen, a reputation for modesty bodes well. So, um, the literal translation is known for modesty, a good omen. So, um, so humble beginnings, uh, maybe you've been a little passive. We have a lot of passivity here. Uh, in the reading that then changes to a lot of dyna very strong dynamics. So there's some passivity here. Um, you're not known as a pugilistic fighter. You're, you're, there's some modesty here, maybe some humble beginnings for you, or like, I might try this. I might think about this. I would like to go in this direction. You're not coming in like, I'm the best, I'm the greatest. You're like, I, I, I think I can do this. I think we can go here. So then line number five, the literal translation is losing wealth on account of a bad neighbor attack brings success. So aggressive, this is where, so I, I kind of see this as like where you've been and how you got to where you are right now. Um, but it could be, you know, a situation that you're currently in. So losing wealth on account of a bad neighbor, someone else behaved badly and it affected you profoundly. Um, or it had a, it had an effect on you. Someone else has um has done something wrong someone else has attacked you someone else has um polluted the waters and you're downstream from them right so uh it's had an, an effect on you and um a counter attack if it may not have been an attack but you are hereby entitled and given permission to fight back um, so uh, this, uh, this aggressive action is justified and effective um, especially if you've suffered any kind of loss you are being invited here to go ahead and fight back. Don't take this laying down. You don't have to take anything laying down here. And then um, standing up for yourself, you have the right to stand up for yourself here. So someone else has behaved badly 
and you can fight back. You can, you know, I don't, I don't know, report them to HR. I don't really know how all of that works. It always is very confusing to me. Um, but, but you can, you know, sue someone if you want to, you can, uh, go get your lawyer to at least write a letter. You can, um, report someone, I, whatever this means to you to fight back, right? And then I love how this is followed up with line six, our third dynamic line, known for modesty, auspicious for military action to pacify the provinces. So we have like, you're actually known for modesty. So if you're going to fight back, everyone's going to believe you. Like, unless you like make a complaint to HR every day, the whole time you're here in the working for them, people are going to believe you. You're, you're usually quiet, you usually go with the flow, but if you have a problem, people are going to listen to it because you rarely complain. You're not the complainer. You don't complain every day. So if you have something here to, to talk about, to complain about, uh, you will be heard specifically because you've, you know, been pretty easygoing and as we see passive um, and immovable in the past. So if you want to make a complaint, make a complaint. Um, you're, you're a known diplomat. You're known, um, you're, everyone gets along with you. So if this person is causing you problems, you can take care of that and people will side with you. The, the universe is in your favor on this one. Um, it's justified and everyone will know you're justified because you haven't, um, you know, if you've never talked bad about anyone and then you want to make a complaint, people are going to listen. And I like that. It's, it's, it's because this isn't your bad behavior. Complaining about someone else's bad behavior or responding to someone else's bad behavior does not make you the aggressor or you the one of the bad behavior. And this is saying like, people will know that. So if you're worried about uh, appearing as, um, not a good girl or not a cooperative person. Everybody already knows you're cooperative. You don't need to prove that. And you're justified in fighting back with something. So then something got, wires got crossed here. And I went to, um, I, I decided wind over wind was somehow, I knew it would be wind, obviously. The hexagram would be wind. If we're talking wind over wind, the hexagram will always be wind. But then I just, happened across the traveler here and I was like here's our hexagram a uh, pursuit of a better life every step has risks and rewards and look we've got our little traveler here we're thinking about pursuing a better life and it all just felt like it made so much sense um you know sometimes we have to face our destiny alone although this one's got a little rabbit with it sometimes we have to face our destiny alone sometimes we just have to we have to do the things we have to make sure we have food and shelter and it's not always fun and it's not always a good time to do that and it doesn't it's not necessarily work that resonates with us but we're all in pursuit of a better life and then i was like so i went on a little trip <laughs> so i was the traveler on a little trip uh because then it's actually wind over wind so, um, but that seemed important. I feel like there's something about that message that wasn't pointless, right? It's the journey. And so I wanted to share with you a little bit of my journey because it's uh, more about the journey than the destination. At least that's what the traveler was talking to us about. Um, we sometimes can be obsessed with the obtainable. So this is, this eight of cups here is the obtainable and the 10 of cups seems like some unobtainable dream that uh, we're never gonna get there, but we're actually thinking of considering pursuing something better. So keep moving. And then that's what I did. I was like, wait, wait, movement, movement, wind, wind, movement. Ah, yes, we're going to wind. How did we end up at Traveler? It was the one before, it's number 56. We're actually going to number 57, but I thought that that journey was important to share with you. Wind, uh, literally translated, is sign of the small sacrifice, auspicious to go somewhere. Ha, huh. so traveling after all, aren't we? Auspicious to see the great person. So the idea here is that you got the wind at your back, right? We've got wind over wind. You've got the wind at your back. If you're sailing, you, you have, you can go directly there. Um, you have full support of the universe. You want to, you want to head out for your 10 of cups? You got the wind at your back. You're no, you don't have a headwind here. You can accomplish this. It's only two more cups, honey. It's only two more cups. So um, the realistic goals uh, can be accomplished easily, smooth sailing. Um, you have support that you need. Uh, you have like a, a mentor or someone here to help you. It's auspicious to see the great person. You've, you've got what you need here. You've got the support. You've got a lot of wind at your back. So go. Um, so it's also can be translated, however, 
wind <laughs> apparently can also be translated as to crouch, allowing fears and self-doubt to control your progress, right? So we've got the wind at our back. Let's not squander this with a bunch of like overthinking and fear and um, hmm. seeing about courage today. What was that quote? Courage. Courage is love conquering fear. The love of these 10 cups must be greater than your fears, right? So we already discussed through our little trip through the traveler, um, the risk reward, right? And it's going to take courage to cross this stream. It's going to take courage to leave this comfortable, extremely solid situation that you have. It will take courage to do that. Uh, but um, you will receive support. Oh, where was that going? Well, we don't know, right? We're, we're in search of the other two cups. We don't know exactly where it's going to end up. But fear would keep us here. And we don't want to leave the eight cups out of fear. We want to leave the eight cups because we want the 10 of cups. We want something, we love something, we hold something dear to ourselves. We don't want to be leaving this land of safety, of solid safety and changing everything up out of fear. We wanna do that because we see something that we like. And that's the whole thing with the eight of cups. There's this possibility for more. And I think that's where like the traveler here came in and was actually part of this whole reading because that's about the search for more. And then the wind is about not letting fear hold you back. Don't hold back the wind. You've got it at your back. Um, so let it, let it move you forward towards something that you love. So the divine is going to be moving you and you need to not resist it, I guess is what we're saying here. Um, so we also had a concept come up about uh, clearing out regrets, dispelling hidden fears. That's really interesting because I didn't even see that I'd written hidden in there. So <laughs> dispelling hidden fears. So that would be like a seek and destroy mission of finding your fears and what's holding you, what, what might create a speed bump for this wind that wants to flow through your life. I wanted to talk about like the wind of a wind is like a saging of your soul, a saging of your desires, saging out the fears, the inner demons, so that our desires and our love can conquer those fears and push those fears out. So I want to say like replacing some sort of toxic air with a purified air, a toxic wind with a wind that's been purified with love and hope. So, do not crouch in this wind, but use it. You're a sailboat. Don't hide from it, but flow. Allow the universe to flow you somewhere. Well, now that's interesting. Nothing will come as a, of this situation void, of course, moon. So void, of course, moon is when, you know, the moon is moving between uh, the um, zodiac signs. It's between zodiac signs, like. And so, so the idea is that there's not like a karmic blowback or you're not, you know, if you're working in, in this sign or if the moon's in this sign, it's going to it has this powerful connection to do this or, or whatever. There's, there's a sense, maybe this is just like at least exploring your options and not letting fear hold you back. Maybe you don't end up actually, maybe you travel in a little circle and you end back up at the Eight of Cups, but you at least went exploring and figuring something out. There's a sense here, though, of like, I, I don't think, I think nothing will come of the situation is really a strange way to phrase this, because even if we travel and we come back, as the traveler often does, come back to home base, come back to where we're at already, we've changed. So something actually did come of that situation. There was a lot of internal change. Our perspective has changed. We have gone out into the world and experienced something and allowed it to change us. So 
So maybe you do just come back to where you were the whole time, but there's a lot of movement. I think also this can be like, don't be afraid. Whatever you fear isn't going to come true, these fears, because we're dealing with these fears here and self-doubt and not letting it be in charge of the progress, not putting, you know, there's a way to stop a sailboat um, in, in, the, in the wind. Um, and I can't remember how, even though I just took sailing lessons. Um, but there's a way to like put your sails at cross across from each other where you don't end up going anywhere and it's actually kind of calm and, and sweet and you can be in some pretty good wind and still like break your sailboat um or like put the brakes on the sailboat so that would be allowing like like if you have the wind at your back you're still fully capable of allowing fears and doubts to stop your progress to stop your movement you can choose to stay in the doldrums by setting up your life that way where i mean and this earth and mountain thing that is pretty solid that is going to take like wind on wind to move a mountain like that right so it's possible that your fears um your fears and your self-doubts could it's not inevitable that this wind move you it's it, so i feel like this is talking about the fears and self-doubts like don't put the brakes on what you fear may not come to pass. So there, the, and there's also a possibility that you may not find anything. You may go searching for something and, and you may end up back there. But what you did find is satisfaction in your eight cups and realize that maybe you had two more cups there after all and they were just hidden in the back of the cupboard or something. Um, so you may end up back where you started again. So I think that's also like a way to run a, like, avoid fear or, or conquer fear is like, hey, I want to go on this trip. I want to go on this journey. Um, I may end up back here again. And uh, so maybe it won't be as scary because I could end up just back here. We could change nothing. Nothing might change. I just need to go search and find out. Uh, but that's not what I'm seeing with the wind over wind, honestly. So balance spirituality and practicality responsibilities and dreams, which is exactly what the traveler was talking about, like this desire for a better life but also understanding that you gotta you you have to keep a roof over your head you have to um you have to learn how to survive not alone but there there is a lot of you got to do a lot of this alone right no one's going to get up and go to work for you well maybe but you still have to deal with the consequences of those decisions as well so we all have to face our destiny alone so uh, practicality and spirituality, your dreams, finding a balance, finding a balance, full moon in Pisces. So I kind of see this like a full circle. You, it is possible that the wind will just blow you right back to, you know, harbor again, the dock. I mean, hopefully, you know, you want to go back to the dock unless your plan is to move. Um, you may end up going full circle. Once all is said and done, you may be right back where you started. But there's like a search for needing to balance something out. And that's why we're going on this like either head trip or some kind of journey. You may end up right where you started again. You may come full circle. There's a sense of needing to balance out the head and the heart too in this process. So you may just be going through a process. Hmm. abracadabra so again we have something happening something a dream coming true you can reach this dream now where before you did not have the tools you did not have what it took you did not you were not prepared you were either not committed you either hadn't learned specific things about yourself or about the world or just even like facts this is like like you took the bar exam twice before and now now you're ready now you can do it now you can you do have the words you do have the reasoning you do have the logic to pass this exam this time um that's what it is it's like a, a passing the test there is something about words 
about understanding something and how, it's something you've been very committed to and you can touch it now. It's, you have the capacity to make something happen in reality. It's not just a dream now. It's, there's a abracadabra is bringing that process, that magical process. It's the magician vibe, right? She's wearing a wedding dress. She's been very committed to a process. She hasn't given up. She's been very committed, very loyal to her own growth, to her own process, to her own expansion of her mind and understanding this. And now, now it is able to move, like the mountain can be moved. We now have the right words. We now have the right vocabulary. We now have learned the lessons, possibly repeated lessons that we've needed to learn in order to break out of uh, the current reality into a new reality, which is this card, moving from the current reality into a new reality. You have the tools now to do that. So what has seemed immovable before is now going to be moved almost with a bippity-boppity-boo. That's what it seems like to me. This wind over wind is very powerful to me. We're going somewhere. We're seeing something. It's auspicious to move. It's auspicious to see the great person. It's you have the advice. You have the support. You have your realistic goals will be happening easily, smooth sailing. All right, paired spirit, watch your words. Oh yeah. Um, again, we have a reference to words. I think this can often be about how we talk about ourselves, how we talk about our dreams, how we talk about possibility and the way that we approach that. Be careful, be careful about what you repeat. Repeated phrases, paying attention and not necessarily control, but definitely paying attention to repeated phrases you see, you hear in your mind. Where did you first hear that phrase? Whose parrot is this? Is this a sailor's parrot? Is this a pessimistic parrot? Is this a pessimist parrot? I think Polly wants a cracker. Like what, what is this parrot saying? Like, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Polly wants a cracker. I think it's talking about like talking about what you want. There's something about words here with abracadabra, the magic word, and your words. So the verbalization of something helps something come into reality. You may need to verbalize something. But you also need to be watching repeated phrases. Well, you know, I can't, it'll never happen, all that, all that stuff that holds us back. The fears and self-doubt and the way we talk about ourselves. Wolf spirit, turn knowledge into wisdom. Mm, I like this because right with this abracadabra, we were talking about the knowledge. We were talking about that you now have the knowledge and now you can apply it. Now you can apply that knowledge. You've learned what you needed to learn. I also like the sort of desire in this wolf's eyes, like it sees something that it wants. All right, I wanna talk about this great person. Who's this great person that we are, can you give me any description of this great person? Ah, we got a couple descriptions here. Who is the great person? Dragonfly spirit. So that's something to look for. Someone, I'm gonna say with a dragonfly tattoo, perhaps. Not an uncommon tattoo though. We have 22 and 23 here. Truth transcends illusion. Maybe this is a person that tells the truth, right? We're talking about words. We're talking about telling the truth. This person could, could, yeah, have messages, speak the truth freely. You know, a little bit of a queen of swords here. They might, they might just speak the truth when they know it, when they see it. And then we have eagle spirit. Spirit has your back. So, I mean, we can talk about leadership here. We can talk about a visionary. This person, this great person is going to be a visionary who speaks the truth. 
an eagle and a dragonfly. They might be a, they might be beautiful while also being able to be aggressive. Maybe it's a lawyer, you know, someone did you wrong and you need to fight back. Maybe this is a lawyer. All right, and then one thing I've been playing with is synchronicity or chiromancy. So we're going to pull out, or not pull out, we're going to allow to fall into our lap cards of synchronicity. Synchronicity is to look forward to little bells that ding in your day and let you know. Okay, got three synchronicities. Oh no, dear me. All right. <sighs> This is really funny because this happened to someone else too. We've got wolf spirit family. Ah, wolf spirit, talk about your synchronicities. So looking for a wolf. And speaking of a lawyer, I, the, this could be, you know, your advisor, some maybe a name, maybe a sign, something. We've got wolf family, family, wolf spirit. So that's a synchronicity to look for. We also have foggy bog patience. We have a crane here. Fog might be something to pay attention to. Elves. Elves. Yeah, if you see elves, yeah, that's definitely a synchronicity to pay attention to. Playfulness. We have a blue dress. Butterflies. A pond or a river. A comet comment coming in here so air spirit knowledge i like this because it looks like this one to me knowledge and then we also got what did we get here oh turning knowledge into wisdom knowledge here um so boat swan bubbles golden orbs a sailboat hmm. that's fine we were just talking about sailboat this information might bring you somewhere, might push you along. Bluebell fairy, gratitude, like an elk. Bluebells, blue flowers. Gratitude. So plenty of synchronicities for you to look out there for Libra, little, little hints upon our way. Tarot is a lot like that anyway, so. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. Join me over on Vimeo for uh, more traditional tarot spread. Bye.